Hello YouTube. So I haven't made a video in a long time, but that's okay, because now I'm ready to talk about pumps. So this setup is going to show that you can use a centrifugal pump that specifically says mount under the water level to pump water up against gravity. Um, we're talking about a waterway uh, recirculation pump. This is 1.115th horsepower, uh, 1 8th horsepower, and uh, it pulls 1.6 amps. So the manual for this pump says you have to mount it below the water because it's non self priming. Uh, self priming pumps let water into the this area somehow so that they, uh, they don't need to have a priming circuit, which is what I've built here. Um, so let's talk about pumps a little bit. So if you don't have a priming circuit, it's open in the bucket here. There's your centrifugal pump and then the tube here. So this starts spinning and it just spins air. There's not enough vacuum created in here to pull the water up against gravity. You have, uh, what is it, like 14.7 PSI of atmospheric pressure pressing down on the water here, but you also have it pressing on the inside here, and that'll, come, that'll become important in a second. Uh, I'll show you right now that this pump is not primed, and when I plug it in, nothing's happening, no water's coming out. The valve is even open here. So let's take it off. So the priming circuit that I built is basically in this diagram here. So there's a check valve at the bottom called a foot valve, so water can only go in this way. There's another check valve up here. There's an inlet valve where a external pressure supply can come from, like a hose. That's right there. And then there's a bleeder valve where we can bleed off air in the system. That's up there. Focus, focus, focus. Yep. And then there's the main uh, supply valve here. So how this works is you close the supply valve so water can't come out here. Then you open the bleeder valve so air and water could come out here. And then you open the priming valve. And so what that does is it pushes water in here goes down here, and it can't go into the bucket because the check valve closed. There's more pressure inside the pipe than the effective pressure of the air pushing down on the water. I think that's how it works. I, I'm not an expert on uh, hydraulics, but I believe all this has to do with relative pressures related to atmosphere pressing down on water and stuff like that. Okay, so now this is all filled with water. And it, the water can go through here because this check valve opens in this direction. So the hose is going in there. And it's bleeding out the air that's in the system. Fills, 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 fills. So now this whole thing is water and water will start shooting out at the top here. So then you close off the air valve and the priming valve. And now this whole system is filled with water. And when the pump starts spinning, it doesn't have, it's not just spinning air, it's actually spinning the water and it's pushing the water through these check valves and it'll pull the water up in here. And if you think, I guess, I think this is the way to think about it. When you open this, the air pressure that's pushing against this water cannot overcome the weight of the water in this column, the power of the pump and the pressure here, it equalizes or so. So let's, let's do a demonstration. So I'll start by closing the main valve. So that's capped, water can't come out here. I'll open the air valve, so it's already open here. Close, open. And now I'll start adding a little bit of water slowly with the bleeder valve. You can hear it coming in. Now if I close this, I'll close it and then open it, you'll hear the air pressure build up. See that? Close, close, close. The hose is pressurizing the system. That's more air coming out. 
So I'm going to open this up a little more and eventually water is going to shoot out of the top of this. You see that no water is going into the bucket because of that check valve in the bucket there. So it's probably almost full now. Yep, there it goes. So I close the that valve, close this valve, and now the system is primed. So there's water in here, in here, in here, all the way down here. And if I open this valve, the water that's in here will fall out. But I'm gonna start the pump first, then I'll open the valve, and we'll see the system in action. Pump is on, valve is open. So there was probably a little more air in the system, and that was why it was slow at first. But now it's just, it's just crushing it. And if you open this valve, uh, any additional air will bleed out. I don't think it squirts water when you do this. I think it's actually pushing, like sucking air through Venturi style, which is why it is a little more turbulent there. So you close this off, it goes back to normal. And the motor is running about at amperage. It cycles between 1.7 and I believe 1.4. A little bit higher, but it's not really struggling. And this is approximately two and a half feet of gravity head. So while it might not be the advised uh, way to run this pump, it definitely works. And um, my guess is that the company that makes this pump supplies it to uh, builders that you know aren't going to engineer this priming circuit, um, which is why they say that and sort of cover your ass in the uh, in the manual. Um, the other thing to know is that because of the check valves, this is still open. Water has drained out of basically here, but there's still water in this column and here. So this pump is still flooded. So I've unplugged it. Doesn't need to be reprimed. We'll plug it back in. And it's a little turbulent at first, but it does pick up. There you go. So hopefully this is helpful for a uh, pump people out there or uh, anybody that is trying to figure this out. Um, thanks for watching.